If home is where the heart is, then may your home be blessed, a shelter from the storms of life, a place of rest. And when each day is over and toil put in its place, your home's dear warmth will bring its smile to light the saddest face. On today's special episode of Africa Facts, we celebrate the life of Rebecca Makomo Kekane Masilela, prominently known as Umagoko. The name Umagoko derives from the Zulu phrase which describes an old woman in English. Umagoko is a daughter of Chief Abraham Kekana, the late chief of the Ndebele. She got married to Solomon Butongo Masilela in 1951. They started a family that then later relocated from Soweto to Swaziland in 1965 and settled at number 43 Triloni Park. Rebecca Makomo Kekana Masilela, a mother to all, was simply known as Umakoko, a title bestowed on her by the people showing respect and admiration for the motherly position she held among South Africans exiled in Swaziland. Even her children switched to referring to her as Umakoko, as opposed to Umama, because of her abundant love and care for people in general, as well as her passion for the liberation movement. Many comrades have always seen her as their mother as well. In her home, number 43 Trilani Park, she harbored, sheltered, conscientized, and supported members of the African National Congress. In particular, operatives of Umkondo Wesizwe, as well as the members of the Pan-African Congress since the early 70s. This house would later be known as Kwamakoko. The house has been best described in many ways by the many comrades who have stepped in and out of it as home away from home, haven, fortress, intelligence repository, key meeting point, a battleground for many as well as a playground for both Swazi and South African police for over 40 years. One fateful morning, one that will go indelibly inscribed in the annals of Masilela's history and that of the extended family of number 43 when Umakoko was laid to rest on the 30th of September 2007. That is the day Umakoko gracefully bowed out of this world, profoundly content with her contribution to the livelihoods of people around her. This was exactly three months from the historic launch of the number 43 Trilani Park book. She is sorely missed by many and her legacy will always stay with us in our hearts. In 2009, March 27th, Umakoko received the much coveted honor, the Order of Lutuli, Silver, bestowed on her by then the President of the Republic of South Africa, Khalima Musanti, at the Union Buildings in Pretoria. Umagogo was an interestingly unifying character for many people who sought familyhood in exile. She provided refuge for both the ANC and the PAC alike. Ironically, she was not a political person, but had great wisdom and ability to envision the world many years ahead of all of us. Let us remind ourselves about who Umagogo was. She was a mother a spiritual leader, a founder of churches and of schools, as well as a truly inspirational woman and a pillar of South Africa's liberation struggle. She fought for democracy whilst raising a family under the most challenging circumstances, both politically and economically. Umagogo's life is, a beauty, is beautifully documented in the now prized book Number 43, Trawani Park, Kwamagogo. Number 43, Trilani Park, Kwamagogo book was launched in 2007, celebrates the life of Rebecca Makomo Masilela, also known as Umagogo, described as the godmother of the ANC in exile, who opened up her home, number 43, Trilani Park in Swaziland, to Carters. The book is authored by Alias Masilela, second last born child of Umagogo. The writing and ultimately publication of the number 43 Trilani Park has ushered in a new need, namely that of documenting activities that led to the liberation of South Africa. As seen from the eyes of the ordinary and often innocent person, 
as well as smaller countries. I believe this book begins to say to all of us, it's time for us to tell the story of our struggle. All sides, about ourselves, about the guerrillas of the ANC, MK members, what type of people were they? Their bravery, their large understanding in Swaziland as to how should they behave for the sake of our struggle and of our movement. What struck me most in this book? It's a book that tells us about war. It's a book that tells us about betrayal. It's a book that tells us about enormous pain and suffering. It's also a book that tells us about incredible humanity and civility. And of all these things, what is the one thing that struck me most? It is that part where Elias describes that his father and mother decided to leave South Africa and go to Swaziland and begin a new life there, establish the family there. Why? To ensure a better education for their children. You know, we live in a time where it is almost it is almost a sin to be patriotic. It's almost a sin to be loyal to your country. It's old-fashioned. People almost dismiss it. What for me was fantastic, and this is the one theme that came out, what for me was fantastic was that you can still be loyal and patriotic to ideals bigger than yourself. The second theme that came out was the enormous civility. Elias was ANC, his brother, lucky PAC. It created an enormous tension between them. And the tension is described in the book. One of the most moving passages is where Elias described how he went to New York on a visit. And lucky at that stage was living in New York. And the difficulty that they had to relate these two brothers because of these political differences between them. But, and this is where the civility and the humanity comes in, they actually transcended that. Today, the Magogo spirit shines through her children, a warmth, a sense of responsibility, a selflessness, a passion for the development of the people around her, particularly those less fortunate than her, a sense of identity, a vision, all of these characteristics come through.